Hello and welcome to Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. My name is Kelly and I'm a former wedding planner and blogger and I'm obsessed with weddings. If you're planning a wedding in Ireland, you're in the right place. You're going to learn the tried and tested methods to planning your dream wedding without the added stress. Think of this as your one-stop shop for everything to do with planning your wedding in Ireland. With me, your new wedding planning bestie and a cup of tea. This is Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. Well, hello and welcome to a new episode of Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online. Last week, we finished a two-part series where I had my husband with me and we spoke all about our wedding. And it was really fun. It was very chatty. And um, we spoke all about our decor choices, the things that we did um, that were a little bit unique and different. We spoke about our theme and colors and what we did when friends of ours borrowed our wedding ideas about three weeks before our big day. So it was a lot of fun. Um, And so if you haven't listened to those episodes, I highly recommend catching up. Um, It was the last two episodes that we did. Um, But today it's still going to be fun, but it's also going to be very practical because we are talking about what you can do if you have bad weather on your wedding day. So we're going to talk about two types of bad weather. And the first one will be all about rain. And the second one is intense heat, which are two um, very... Um, They're predictable things. You can predict if the weather's going to get rainy or very hot. And they are common weather options in Ireland. And there are some other types of weather that you'll want to deal with as well. You know, if it's very snowy or windy. Um, But the principles that I'm going to share with you can be applied to different types of weather situations. But let's get started with the very first one, which is rain. It's Ireland. And even in the summer, there's a chance of rain. So it's always helpful to be prepared. And um, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that it's actually considered good luck if it rains on your wedding day. And I know that that doesn't take all the nerves away, but there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of good luck. So if you can try and reframe your thinking and go, you know what, it's raining, we can't change it, but this is good luck, that will help you to feel a little bit better about the situation But the tips I'm going to share will actually help you to practically prepare and make the most of a rainy wedding day. First thing, if it does rain, I recommend having some kind of romantic lighting. So it could be candles or fairy lights, anything that you can do to counteract the gloomy, moody skies and make it feel cozy and romantic and intimate at your ceremony and reception locations. I think that that's a great way to embrace the rain and the weather and to make the most of it. Next thing you can do, very, very practical thing, and that is to be prepared to shift your timeline around. So we have done episodes before where we've gone into the detail of planning your timeline ahead of time, which I still highly recommend, but there's something to be said about being flexible. And it's a lot easier to be flexible when you have a wedding coordinator or a wedding venue coordinator that will be helping you to manage the timeline on the day. So as you know, with rainy weather, there'll be some things that you just can't do as planned. Maybe you're planning on having some outdoor um, photos together, always a great choice. And if it's raining for most of the day, it's helpful to be flexible so that if the, there's a break in the clouds and you can get outside and have your photos taken, even when it's not necessarily the time you'd plan to do that, that will help you to get everything done that you want to get done. So just be a little bit flexible, work with your venue coordinator, work with your wedding planner and see what you guys can do together to make the most of, you know, any break in the rain, any moments that you can nip outside and get some great pictures. Next thing, umbrellas. Of course, when it's raining, you want to have lots of umbrellas. It could be that you organize the umbrellas and it could also be that you put the word out there to your guests ahead of time to say, we've checked the weather, it's going to rain. So we recommend bringing your own umbrella. Just get ahead of it, make sure the people are kept dry. And we'll talk a little bit later about a backup plan and how you can actually make sure you've got the money for umbrellas if you decide that you are going to fit the bill for that. Another thing you should do is you should actually chat with your hairstylist and your makeup artist. So if it's going to rain and you're going to get caught outside at any point, your hair and makeup are at risk. So your hairstylist will be able to tell you about hairstyles that are good for you. So if there's a bit of rain or humidity or even just a little bit of drizzle, just to make sure that your hair still looks really good for the whole day. 
For some people, that might mean having your hair up. It might mean having different types of products that you use. It could mean having a touch-up at some point. And the same goes for makeup. It could be different products. It could be touch-ups. It could be something that you can reapply later in the day. But I recommend talking to your hairstylist and makeup artist. They can walk you through your options. And then the final point on a rainy wedding day is don't let it ruin the day. There's so much that can happen with, you know, with the weather that's completely out of your control and you can allow it to wreck everything. Or you can say, you know what? It's just rain. It's out of our control. We're going to have a great day no matter what happens. And the truth is your guests will have a great day too. So as long as you decide you're going to have a good day and as long as your guests are having fun, that's all that matters. So make the decision even now that no matter what happens weather-wise, you're going to have a great time. Okay, let's move on to the next type of weather, which is intense heat. And believe it or not, it can get really hot in Ireland, especially in summer. And so it's really helpful to make sure you're prepared for that. So very first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your guests are cool. And that can be done in two ways. First way is to have some kind of marquee or a handhold parasol or some kind of like umbrella or something that they can hold. Um, It just helps them to be shaded. Um, And then if they're shaded, if they're out of the heat, that's a huge win. Second thing, keep them hydrated. So one way to keep them cool is just give them water. It could be bottled water. It could be a water station, um, you know, with, um, you know, drinks that have lemon and cucumber and watermelon and all kinds of things. Just make sure that you've got plenty of water on tap and everybody will be hydrated and they'll be able to survive the intense heat. But here are five things that you can do to prepare for the heat for yourself. First thing, make a wise choice when shopping for your wedding dress. So if you know you're getting married in summer, um, you may want to be very, very smart about the types of fabrics that you choose. So wedding dresses can often have lots of heavy layers of fabric. It just depends on the type of dress. It can depend on the style you've gone for, whether or not the dress is being custom made for you or you're buying it off the rack. Um, But if you know that you're getting married in summer, you can opt for lighter fabrics, um, even a shorter dress if that's something that you're interested in. But just have a think about that when you buy your dress and don't wait until the week before your wedding to go, oh no, it's going to be really hot. What am I going to do? Next thing you can do when it comes to choosing things to wear, make sure your shoes are breathable. Um, Depending on just how hot it is, you might want to ditch the heels and go for something that's a bit more breathable like flats or sandals. Just consider all your options. It may even be that for half the day you're wearing your heels and you know that your feet are going to get very sweaty and very hot and you have a change of shoes for later in the day. Number three, wear your hair up. Lots of people look amazing with an updo. And so if you don't want to have hair sitting on your shoulders, on your back, on your neck and sticking to you, making you feel even warmer than you need to be, having an updo is a great solution. Number four, talking about breathable things. What about breathable underwear? Things like cotton underwear. It'll just help you to feel fresh for longer. No matter how hot it is, no matter how many layers you've got on, your underwear can play a huge role in feeling just more comfortable. And then the final item when it comes to looking after yourself in the intense heat is to stay in the shade. So work with your wedding coordinator, work with your photographer so that at different points in the wedding day, if you have the choice between being out in the sun or being in the shade, pick the shade. The more time you can spend undercover in the shade and away from direct sunlight, the more you'll feel fresh and cool and avoiding that intense heat. And bonus tip, I know we've spoken about hydrating your guests, but don't forget to hydrate yourself. Have as much water as you can. You don't want to be getting headaches and heat stroke. So just make sure you're drinking lots of water. So we're going to end by talking to you your backup plan. So no matter what type of weather we're dealing with, whether that's rain or intense heat or wind or snow, whatever it is, I always recommend having a solid backup plan because you won't know what the weather's going to do until it's closer to the time you want to make sure you're on the front foot. So the first thing that I recommend is to have a reliable weather forecast app. Some apps allow you to predict what the weather could be doing, you know, six months from now. But obviously, the closer you get to the day, the more accurate that will be. Um, But I recommend using an app that can help you to predict the weather, not so that you can get it 100% correct, but just so you can have peace of mind and you can put some of the anxious nerves 
to the side. Um, and reg- regardless of the weather forecast, it's still a good thing to have a backup plan as part of your wedding day plans. And this is how you can manage to pull off a good backup plan. First thing is to talk to your venue and your wedding planner way ahead of time. So when you're looking at your venue, when you're sitting down with your planner or your wedding coordinator, you can ask them things like, is there an indoor option for this part of the wedding in case it rains? Perhaps it's your ceremony that's meant to be outside. Just ask the question, is there an indoor option? And part B of that question is, will the guest count change based on my plan B option? Because some indoor options for the ceremony will have um, a lower capacity than the outdoor option. So it's helpful to ask those questions very early on. And then you need to ask them, at which point will I need to decide if we're going to go with plan B? Um, So my advice is really just to work very closely with your wedding planner, your venue coordinator, so that you know what the options are and when to implement that plan and who's going to, you know, run with making that plan happen. I also recommend having space in your budget. So we spoke about things like hiring umbrellas or if you're going to hire a marquee or even things like getting those extra candles and fairy lights that we spoke about. Um, If it's rainy and cold and you want to do things like get towels or blankets or you know, um, mats to put at each entrance so guests can wipe their feet, whatever it is that you need to make sure that everybody has a great experience and everyone's comfortable and dry and warm, or they are shielded from the heat and you're getting sunscreen and handheld parasols and extra water bottles, whatever you need to do, it's helpful if you already have space in your budget, if you need to implement plan B. So don't wait until a few days before and go, oh no, we need to make a change. What are we going to do? How can we afford it? Put it into your budget at the very beginning. And if you don't need to use it, great. Put that money towards something else, like, you know, put it towards something for your home or something for your honeymoon, but have space in your budget. Um, Make sure that you communicate with your suppliers because some of them won't be impacted by the change in plan. Some of them won't need to know if it's going to rain or not, but others might. So if you had already planned on having an outdoor meal, the people who were going to prepare the food and the decor and get everything set up, they need as much warning as possible. So make sure you're communicating with your suppliers, find out what their plan B is, let them know what your plan B is and keep that conversation open and then everything will run smoothly. And my final tip for you is don't handle this alone. That's what wedding coordinators and venue coordinators are for. And of course, your wedding party and your friends and family, everyone's there to make sure that you have the best day possible. So don't take it upon yourself to handle all the bad weather that's happening. No one expects you to be a weather guru and to fix all the problems, but work with those around you so that you can make sure your day is special for you and for your guests. Well, thank you for listening today. The Wedding Wednesdays with Weddings Online podcast is produced by me, Kelly, and mixed, mastered, and edited by Glenn Hartman. For more wedding planning tips, advice, checklists, and more, visit weddingsonline.ie.